Good afternoon or good morning. Welcome to our fourth in our series of six APHIS uh, team webinars. I'm Stuart Schmidt, a member of the NCB FAA's Regulatory Agencies Committee, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's presentation. As a reminder, all attendees are in listen-only mode. However, questions may be submitted by typing them into the question box on the webinar toolbar. Please be sure to use the question box and not the chat box as the chat box will not be monitored. We will address questions at the end, time permitting, and the webinar will also be recorded and posted to both the NCB FAA and USDA APHIS websites. A link will be sent to all who registered. The NCB FAA NEI is excited to be partnering with the APHIS ACE team to present this series of six webinars as we moved into the next phase of electronic filing for APHIS core entries. This webinar focuses on miscellaneous and processed products and previous webinars uh, focused on other specific APHIS regulated products and those recordings are currently available. And that those were the APHIS core message set, fruits and vegetables, and animal products. On Thursday, February 27th, we will have uh, the fifth webinar, which will cover cut flowers and plants for planting. And on Tuesday, March 3rd, with the series will end with seeds not for planting. As we move through the presentation, each speaker will provide a brief self-introduction. However, over the course of this series, we hope that you have become familiar with, uh, with all that are uh, engaged, and if you haven't, please do so. We have a lot to cover, so without further delay, I will get the presentation started and turn it over to the APHIS ACE team. Hello, this is Richard Leshen, the ACE Program Manager, and I want to thank you for having us here today. Um, this presentation describes how to submit APHIS required data for miscellaneous and processed products with the Department of Homeland Security's Automated Commercial Environment, or ACE. This presentation assumes the viewer has reviewed the first presentation using the Automated Commercial Environment, ACE, to submit import data for APHIS regulated commodities. APHIS regulated miscellaneous and processed products may include things such as bags, bees, bee products, broom corn, dried or herbal teas, grains and seeds, uh, seed screenings, grasses, hay, fodder, herbal medicines, extracts, oils, powders, insects, earthworms, uh, snails, nuts, packing material, processed fruit and vegetables, processed or dried plant material, processed seeds, wooden screens, soil, rocks, uh, wood products, lumber, logs, and cotton or cotton products. Please note that this presentation will not address specific import admissibility questions, but rather provide general information about import conditions and ACE data entry. Miscellaneous and processed products are regulated by quarantine PPQ, which is agency program code APQ in the APHIS core message set. This slide and the following two slides are diagrams from the APHIS core message set implementation guide. These diagrams, along with others from the guide, may be useful to filers to understand the flow of the import data required for miscellaneous and processed products, AP0700. Definitions of the codes may be found in the Appendix PGA and the technical rules enforcing use of certain codes may be found in the Implementation Guide. This diagram shows this the overall... P Sorry, this is Cecilia. Um, we, your slides aren't moving on um, our end. We're still on the intro slide. Sorry, I think we have a connection issue. So uh, just bear with us a moment, please. Okay, thank
Are you seeing the diagram now? Sorry. I am, but 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 it's not in presentation mode. It's um, you it's just in, it's with your notes, and it's not in the presentation mode. No, now we see it. All right, thank you. We apologize for the technical difficulties there. Um, so the conversation I just had about this diagram showing uh, which um, APHIS core message set program codes and where it can be found linked to the, the number and the, the type uh, is now showing. So we'll uh, give you a few seconds for that and then we'll move on to the next slide. This diagram shows the overall PG-10 commodity category and type, PG-14 LPCO and PG-01 agency processing code for all PPQ regulated commodities. Filers can use this diagram to find the specific business diagrams in the APHIS Core PGA message set implementation guide for AP0700 commodities, which are highlighted with the red boxes on the slide. This diagram is one of the two highlighted on the previous slide. This diagram shows the relevant PG-06 processing type code, PG-10 category codes, PG-10 commodity qualifier, and characteristic codes for the AP-0700 commodities. This diagram also shows the broad scope of commodities that may fall under the AP-0700 miscellaneous and process product category types. Filers can find this diagram in the APHIS Core PGA Message Set Implementation Guide. This diagram shows which PG-10 elements should be submitted based on the category code. For example, Broomcorm would not have a PG-06 processing code. It would be reported with the category code 074, or 704, articles crafted from Broomcorn and Broomstraw. Brooms made of Broomcorn or Broomstraw. This would be followed by a commodity qualifier of A70 for condition and a characteristic qualifier of new. All the definitions can be found in the appendix PGA. This slide shows some of the data elements that must be provided in the APHIS Core PGA message set. Please refer to the APHIS Core implementation guide for a list of mandatory data elements that must be entered. Please note, scientific names are required for AP0700 commodities to include codes 705 cone, 708 grain, 709 grasses, 712 herbarium species, 713 insects, earthworms, pathogens, and snails, 714 nuts, 720 skins of goat, lamb, and sheep, 723 lumber, and 724 logs. When shipment information is entered into the message set, it must include coding which directs the information to the agency and program unit commissioned with regulatory authority over that commodity. For imports of commodities regulated by APHIS, the government agency code for APHIS is APH. For commodities regulated by Plant Protection and Quarantine, the government agency program code is APQ. Many of the miscellaneous and processed product commodities are inspected by CBP Agriculture, which is declared using the government agency processing code A01. The PG-10 record line is the primary architecture used to help stakeholders correctly report commodities within the APHIS message set. This, line record, this record line is critical for APHIS message sets because it supports the ability to filter and efficiently align commodities into specific groups. The main data element, commodity category type, is a top-level grouping which allows commodities or products to be lumped and or split into specific subgroups using the data elements associated with commodity categories and commodity characteristics. Plant protection and quarantine will continue to require an issue import permit. You must continue to submit government certifications as original paper documents such as phytosanitary certificates or CITES certificates.
As mentioned in pre a previous presentation, APHIS PPQ issued miscellaneous and process product permits have a paperless link to ACE, provided the correct permit information is entered into the PGA message set. Filer, provided the permit matches, filers do not need to submit the permit via paper or DIS. Please contact us if you are experiencing issues with the permit match feature. Information contained within the permit may also be of assistance when entering message set data. For example, the commodity name PG17 can be found in the box titled Article Info. Local authorized party PG19 and PG20 can be found as the permitting name box. Intended use PG01 and country of origin PG32 are also listed within this document. The import permit type is determined from the requirements listed within the Code of Federal Regulations in regards to specific commodity and associated pests and or pathogens. Numerous regulatory types within the PPQ 587 permit to import plants and plant products can be utilized, which are listed within the implementation guide document. This example is for broom corn regulated under 7 CFR 319.41. Therefore, the required permit for entry is a PPQ 587-41 specific to the regulations for broom corn imports. PG14 type code A17. While the phytosanitary certificate itself must continue to be submitted in original paper form, the certificate number must be provided in the message set. This is important to, in order to ensure the correct certificate is attached to the corresponding message set and PPQ permit if required in the A system. Please note a phytosanitary certificate is not always required. APHIS regulations will determine if one is required. Having a copy of the phytosanitary certificate will aid in the submission of the APHIS core message set. Information required in the message set may be found on certificates, such as exporter name and address, importer name and address, commodity description, genus, species, treatment types, country of export, and other items. Here we will walk through a single example of filing APHIS core message set for miscellaneous and process products. Many filings will be similar in nature with different commodity information being provided. This walkthrough is from PG line 01 until the end in, a, in PG numerical order. This may not be the order in which data is entered into your software. In this case, we are going to take the example of pine lumber. The filer would report Agency code APH for USDA APHIS, program code APQ for plant protection and quarantine, processing code of A01 for CBP agriculture review, and an intended use code of 130.00 to identify the goods for consumer use as a non food product. In this scenario, the importer identified they will be submitting electronic images for PGA review and all entity and proprietary business, all entity and proprietary business is treated as confidential, and as such, that field should always be coded as Y for yes. The genus and species must be entered as data elements, because as previously discussed, for certain category types and miscellaneous. I'm sorry, we are currently experiencing. Ricky, are you there? Ricky, are you still on the line? I apologize again. It appears this room is having some technical difficulties. Um, uh, Stuart, do you happen to have where it left yeah, off? I, I, I do. Uh, we were just uh, on the intended use code and the confidentiality indicator. Thank you. Uh, so the intended use code would be 130. 
to identify the goods for consumer use as a non-food product. In this scenario, the importer identified they will be submitting electronic images for PGA review. All entity and proprietary business is treated as confidential and as such should always be coded for Y for yes. The genus and species must be entered as a data element as previously discussed for certain commodity category codes in the miscellaneous and processed products category. Primarily, this data element can be found on the phytosanitary certificate or provided by the importer. As a reminder, with wood, you must file an APHIS Lacey message set if the commodity is flagged for it. This is in addition to filing APHIS core. They are two separate message sets. In the PGO6 line, the filer would identify a source type code, in this case, for wood, HRV, or harvested, with a country code of NZ for New Zealand. The country of origin may be found on the phytosanitary certificate or permit. According to the permit conditions for timber or timber products, this product is required to undergo heat treatment, T314-C, or processing code AHT01. The phytosanitary certificate verifies that the treatment was performed. A start and end time for the processing may be required and can be acquired from the importer. For the PG-10 commodity characteristic information, a category type code of AP0700 will be used to identify the commodity as a miscellaneous and processed product. The category code further breaks this down with code 723 for lumber. The 723 code is what identified the need for the genus and species to be reported. For miscellaneous and processed products, there are two qualifier codes. In this case, A71 physical state would be chosen with a characteristic qualifier of HEA or heated. Above, you can see that the phytosanitary certificate shows the commodity being heated for six hours at 74 degrees Celsius. In this case, the importer requires both a permit type A12 and a phytosanitary certificate type A01 to be reported in the PG13, PG14 lines for LPCOs. For the permit, the date qualifier is one, showing the expiration date of the permit. The transaction type would be three because it has a start and end date. The phytosanitary certificate would have a date qualifier three, which is the date the certificate was signed and a transaction type one for single use. Remember, when entering the phytosanitary certificate number to include all numbers, letters, or special characters, certificate numbers will be used to match the original paper document with the submitted PGA message set. For the PG-17 wildlife commodity information, APHIS requires only a specific common name, AKA vernacular or colloquial name, in this case, pine. APHIS conditions, APHIS requires the reporting of contact and address information for two entities beyond what is found in the CBP data, header data previously reported in the PG-1929. The ultimate consignee, code UC, and the customs broker, code CB, or if no customs broker, importer, code IM, when a broker isn't used. The ultimate consignee is the party in the United States to whom the overseas shipper sold the imported merchandise. If at the time of entry or release, the imported <laughs> merchandise has not been sold, then the delivered to party, ultimate consignee at the time of entry or release is defined as the party in the U.S. to whom the overseas shipper consigned the imported merchandise. If the merchandise has not been sold or consigned to the U.S. party at the time of entry or release, then the ultimate consignee or delivered to party at the time of entry or release is defined as the proprietor of the U.S. premises to which the merchandise is to be delivered. In other words, the party who has been designated on the invoice packing list as the final recipient of the stated merchandise. APHIS also requires the reporting of the contact and information for the LPCO authorized party, other known as LAP, where applicable. If an LPCO in PG 1314 is reported, then LPCO localized authorized per party and corresponding contact information is required for the UC 
the ultimate consignee customs broker or importer and the, L and the localized authorized party when applicable. The local authorized party varies depending upon LPCO type. In general, this is the issued to party or holder of the permit. For APHIS permits, the LAP is equivalent to the permit E, while certificates generally use the term issued to party. In some instances, certificates have two parties listed. Therefore, the entity who conveyed the request or paid for the certificate should be used. PG26 is used to identify the packing and quantity. In this case, the filer is using one to identify a single packaging and then is reporting the amount in kilograms. If cargo is shipped via container, the information would be reported in PG27. For PG30, the inspection status is I, product location for regulatory authority inspection. When reporting I for inspection status, the filer must report the arrival location code as two. The arrival location would be the first port of arrival and will be transmitted as a port code. For PG32 routing information, sh this shipment did not transit or transship other countries, so a code of 198 would be reported for the original location. For this example, New Zealand would be reported as the country of origin. Here is another example of, uh, in this case, brooms containing broom corn. In this case, the government agency processing code would be A01 for CBP agric agriculture. The category type, to, type code would be AP0700, a miscellaneous product, and the characteristic code 700 for broom corn and broom straw. Reporting of category 704 does not require the genus and species to be reported. In addition, PG17 should be reported with the common specific name of the product, in this case, broom or brooms. The filer would still report the PG1314 line for the PPQ58741 code A17 permit to import plants and plant products. PGs 19 and 20 would be reported for the LAP of the permit and the ultimate consignee and customs broker or importer. PG 26 packing information, PG 30 arrival information, and PG 32 commodity and route, routing information would still need to be reported. In this example, we have a commodity that crosses both the VS program and the PPQ program. Dead earthworm material can include powdered, freeze-dried, and earthworm cat castings. You may report under a single category type code, but remember to report the presence of both permits. You may also choose to repeat the PG-10 category type code to provide extra information. It is recommended that if the product, based on the permit, needs to go to the plant inspection station, AO2, to report as a AO700 category. AP0700 category. The source type would be 267, country of species origin. If filing under AP0700, the genus and species would need to be reported in PG05. The category codes would be 713 earthworms for when reporting under AP0700 and 317 for AP0300 for animal products. The filer would still need to report PG 13 and 14 lines for the PPQ 526 permit to move live plant pests or noxious weeds, A10, code A10, and a VS permit 16-6A, code A24, importation and transportation of controlled material and organisms and vectors. PGs 19 and 20 would be reported for the LAP of the permit and the ultimate consignee and customs broker or importer. PG26 packing information, PG30 arrival information, and PG32 commodity routing information would all still need to be reported. Another commodity that may overlap between AVS and uh, between veterinary services and PPQ would be goat or sheepskin. Here we'll speak, here's a slide showing guidance on flaggings when no LPCO is required, but the tariff code flagged for AQ1 data may be required. AFIS HTS flagging is based on the tariff code description, including explan explanatory notes. There may be country or commodity specific restrictions that may not require an LPCO. 
Tariff code flagging cannot account for the country or commodity specific restrictions. If no LTCO is present and your commodity is flagged AQ1, you may disclaim using code A1 not regulated, I'm sorry, disclaim code A not regulated or B data not required as per PGA guidance. Or you may file a message set with the minimal, minimally required data element. It may be beneficial to provide clearing and inspecting officers with more granular information. This is especially beneficial if similar commodities require LPCOs depending on, on country of origin or if similar commodities appear the same but regulating them is dependent on composition, ingredients, intended use, or physical state. For example, APHIS, for APHIS, rattan slash bamboo furniture is reported under a single tariff code that flags for AQ1. If the product is fully manufactured, then you may disclaim using code B, data not required as per APHIS guidance, and be sure to include a correct cargo description. Fully artificial Christmas trees also may flag for AQ1 using the HTS code shown. If no pine cones or bark are present, the shipment would be disclaimed as A, not regulated by APHIS. Even with disclaim, filers can also submit DIS documents to support disclaim if you choose not to file PGA data. Examples include country of origin certificate or ingredients list. Here is a slide that shows a list of the current APHIS core PGA message set data elements which are mandatory with the exception of the PG-13 and 14 lines. In this scenario, we have a milled processed rice from the country Thailand, which does not require an LPCO. You would use PG-10 qualifier MIL, PG-10 category 708, and country code TH for Thailand. Because PG-10 has a code of 708 grains, in this case, PG-05 genus and species would be required. APHIS core message questions can be sent to our general mailbox, ace.itbs at usda.gov. Please be sure to provide us with screenshots, if possible, error codes, and other relevant information. APHIS and CBP have multiple resources available to filers to assist with APHIS core PGA data submission. You can find all these resources on our APHIS ACE website. The APHIS ACE website lists guidance on any exemptions on filing message sets and entry types where APHIS core flagging is enforced. In addition, the APHIS ACE website links to many CBP ACE appendices, including the DIS implementation guide, Appendix R, CBP ACE DIS PGA forms eligibility list. APHIS import eligibility questions, does the APHIS require an LPCO for commodity, should be referred to the specific APHIS program that regulates the commodity. Resources for contacting APHIS regarding such admissibility questions can be found on the APHIS Import Export webpage or be, by contacting the APHIS Customer Service Center. I'd like to thank you all for hanging in there with our technical issues, and I'll turn it back over to Stuart so we can answer some questions. All right, great. Thank you very much. Wonderful presentation. <clears throat> Makes a uh, complex uh, message set almost so almost so I can understand it but um, hey with a, a lot of excellent information and I, we, we do have a couple of questions I think the first thing I will comment though is our number one question is always can I get a copy of the presentation and uh, <clears throat> so that presentation the presentation itself is uh, being recorded and will be posted both on the uh, NCBFAA website as well as the uh, APHIS website. So yes, it will be available for all that have registered for the webinar. The, uh, the first question out of the gate is a little technical. So, um, and that is, will APHIS core be data be required in addition to APHIS Lacey Act information on goods with both a 
PPQ 505 and uh, HTS flagging for may be required for both. I know this was answered in the uh, in the presentation, but figured it was worth asking again. Yes, APHIS LACI and APHIS Core are two separate message sets. APHIS LACI will continue to flag and APHIS Core will flag separately. If flagged for either one or both, you will need to file all message sets flagged. All right, thank you. And the second question is relates to the uh, LPCO. So if you have a commodity in APHIS Core uh, data for lumber products, which do not require LC or LPCOs, for example, Canadian cedar, would APHIS Core data need to be transmitted for Canadian cedar or can filers disclaim? So it may, it may depend on the flagging. If it's AQ1, then I believe it can be disclaimed. However, as we said in the presentation, you may want to file a message set to help the inspector at the port of entry uh, better understand what is coming through. If it's AQ2, data is required, there is no disclaim, and you would have to file the minimally required message set. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Makes sense. Uh, next question, how does the inspector know that the heat treatment stated has actually been performed? Uh, that's more of an operational question that I would refer to CBP Agriculture, who would be performing the inspections related to those materials. Okay, so they're, they're still going to be required to be marked with the heat treatment or the the Correct. IS yeah right they would they would need to go undergo the heat treatment they would provide the documentation and it would be up to the CBP agriculture specialist on whether or not to perform an inspection and I don't want to speak to their inspectional process without them so I would refer you to CBP agriculture to answer that question okay thank you all right, the next question. In the event of mixtures of wood, um, uh, SPF for uh, Lacey Act filing, uh, they've provided a special reporting for genus and species with the designation of, of SPF. Will APHIS core filing require each species to be reported as a component parts? in the data set or will there be a similar SPF designation created as um, this is not a current option? Um, we'll, we'll have to check on that. If that question could be forwarded to our uh, ace.itds at usda.gov mailbox, uh, we can better look at the question and provide a response. Uh, in addition, I would like to note that uh, we are getting a copy of all the questions asked, and we will be, APHIS will be compiling a question and answer document we hope to share with NCBFA after all the presentations. Okay, so uh, next question relates to the slide uh, regarding uh, the dead earthworms. And uh, so what is the key element to determine if a dead earthworm worm should be reported uh, either as AVS or APQ and how would you decide which is the correct one? As feed for animals they have to be filed with FDA as well and submit prior notice. Um, hi this is Vivek Kamath. Um, I'm part of the APHIS ACE team and I um, represent the uh, APHIS veterinary services side. So um, I can help answer this question. Uh, so, you know, in, in the presentation that was just completed, um, there were certain, uh, there's certain guidance given as when to pick um, AP 700. Uh, I think it was mentioned, you know, if the commodity was uh, destined to go to a plant inspection station. So if the permit conditions required it to go to a plant inspection station, then AP 700 should be chosen. 
Okay. Oh, I think, yeah, sorry. So I, I believe that was the one condition. Um, but in terms of uh, the message set is a, uh, a, a tool to declare your commodity. So um, other than that one exception, choosing uh, uh, animal products or, or um, miscellaneous and process product would uh, likely depend on, uh, you know, uh, would just be a choice. Uh, really, it's a, it's a declaration. So uh, declaring that you have the two types of permits, the one, uh, you know, PPQ permit and the one uh, veterinary services permit um, would be, that's the most important so that the uh, correct admissibility information is presented. Um, so in this, in, again, with these earthworms, it's you're presenting the information, you're declaring that you have dead earthworm material, that you have met all the APHIS requirements for because you have both the PPQ and veterinary services permits along with the corresponding certificates if required, and um, you would present that. So our, our example was just to show you that the same this, this commodity does overlap. However, APHIS is not requiring two separate message sets, just the one. Um, and, you know, regarding the FDA comment, yes, um, you know, these commodities would still be required to have other PGA data. Does that help um, answer the question? And if and whoever asked the question, if you um, if you have any follow up, feel free to email us as well. Yeah, I thought it was pretty clear, but there there may be some follow up on that. So uh, please, if if there's follow up, uh, please send to the uh, Ask AFIS uh, email. Uh, next question. Uh, when submitting the why indicator, we are always indicating we are submitting information to the document imaging system, uh, or if you're not submitting DIS equals a no uh, indicator, an end indicator maybe. Correct. If you're not submitting electronic uh, documents, then you could indicate with an <laughs> end for no. All right. Um, the next question is, and I'm going to cover because the the, the uh, webinar was was previously uh, covered uh, as part of animal products, and it relates to that. So, will any uh, webinar cover importation of dogs? And uh, so the the question is, did the uh, animal products cover dogs specifically? Uh, right, so we, we did the, get this question after that webinar. Um, right at this point, we don't have a webinar specifically focused on live dog imports. It is um, many live dog imports are regulated under APHIS Animal Care, which is agency program code AAC. Um, so we don't have any webinar scheduled at this time. It's a um, relatively minor topic compared to the other topics and commodities that we're covering. Um, in terms of its complexity. However, if, if uh, anybody has any specific questions regarding live dog imports, we're happy to address them. Um, you can either ask them here to Stuart or uh, you can email us uh, offline. Um, other thing I would like to note is we did cover um, in the last presentation about animal products, we did touch on veterinary services regulated live animals, which are livestock and poultry. Um, and those are at, the, at current um, currently not required. Um, we, we're not requiring um, APHIS ACE data for those uh, regulated live animals. Live dogs, yes. So livestock and poultry, no. All right. Um, next question. Um, is there a list of HTS numbers for the manufactured and processed products? affected by the APHIS flags? So our trade supplemental guide, um, which can be found at the same website as our implementation guide, does list, does have a list at the end of the trade guide that lists all the HTS codes that are flagged for APHIS and a correlation to different category type codes that may be needed for that HTS code. So it'll tell you also, it'll tell you the Flagging severity, AQ2 or AQ1. All 
All right, perfect. Uh, next question. On the, uh, the, the ultimate consignee was defined in three different ways. Do these need to be assessed in the order in which they were presented? Or if a party meets any of the definitions, can that entity reported, be reported as the ultimate consignee? I believe it would be in that order. So, um, you know, if it's been sold to someone, that party who the importation is consigned to, if it's not sold, uh, then essentially the proprietor or the U.S. Pre premise where it will be going. All right. Um, next question is uh, relates to uh, northern border entries and uh, it doesn't seem so bad to transmit APHIS core data when you're dealing with a, an ocean entry that is one or two lines but when you're dealing with a northern border entry that is dozens possibly hundreds of lines these data elements are uh, burdensome. So they're wondering if the, the seems more of a statement than a question, but the um, you know so so I think I'll take it from this uh, aspect is that you know from from my perspective, you know we, we certainly share concern about you know large amounts of data being required for specific entries and um, you know, so I, so I think I'll just throw it over to you know to 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 the APHIS team to to comment on um, you know the the entry complexity, the number of lines, and and that type of thing. So uh, the the data elements that were developed were developed off of the forms that were formally submitted. So these are the same data elements just in a digital format. Um, I would say that there are software things that can be done to alleviate some of the burden. Um, things like, uh, I believe we have, we allow for different uh, GS1 or uh, codes or uh, product numbers to be used. And if you put that in and work with your software developer to develop a standard message set for that product number, then that could help eliminate some of the burden. Um, other things have certain fields that could be auto-populated, uh, drop-down menus, um, but we understand that there are a lot of data elements and we continue to work to refine it. But again, these are the data elements that were also being used for paper <coughs> submission previous to this. So they are the same data elements. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that, you know, is that, you know, that for where you know that those situations exist, it's going to require a lot of coordination with your uh, importer and or shipper in order to get these data elements timely. And uh, so there may be one of the things that we discussed initially on the core PGA message set is that, you know, it's not necessarily um, only going to affect um, you know data, uh, but it might affect uh, timing and, and flow of goods and, and that type of thing. So uh, you know, as brokers uh, and importers, we need to be cognizant of what is required, what's being shipped, and the timeliness of, of getting that data, so that uh, you know you, you're going to have to evaluate your, your your supply chain in order to take advantage of or uh, comply with with the requirements then the, uh, the the last question that I have is uh, kind of a basic question and um, relating to the flags but it's um, the, the question reads how does how can an importer know if their product requires APHIS core Um, so an importer um, can contact our offices. Um, so at the very last slide, um, we link to our APHIS ACE website, which also then further links to our import export services. 
So an importer could um, utilize the resources there, such as our um, emails and phone numbers, to contact the relevant um, APHIS program. So for plant plant products, it's a, a, a PPQ, plant protection and quarantine. For animals and animal products, it would be um, veterinary services, live dogs would be animal care, and certain uh, biotechnology and uh, you know GMOs and things would be biotechnology and regulatory services. Um, the descriptions of all these programs are in our implementation guide. Um, I should also note that uh, we mentioned this last week, but just as another, another uh, plug um, for animal products, um, in, in mid-March, we are looking to unveil a new online self-service assistant um, that can be used to determine import requirements for certain animal product commodities. So um, at that point, we'd look to, um, instead of having importers and brokers email and call us, uh, to move towards a more self-service tool. Um, so do look forward to that uh, announcement from us. But otherwise, I believe most of our guidance is available through the email and phone. Uh, I should also just say for fruits and vegetables, there is a online database called FAVIR, F-A-V-I-R, which is also used for the fruit and vegetable um, import requirements. Yes, yeah, so I think it's safe to say that there's all kinds of tools out there for importers to use, and if all else fails, use the Ask USDA email question. But um, you know, starting with the tariff numbers and and flags from there, I think you can begin your investigation and, and see if your product is is covered or not. Uh, there was one other question that came in as you were answering that one and uh, specific to new farm machinery and it seems all of our farm machines will flag for AQ1. Is the statement of new equipment on the commercial invoice uh, enough? I'm assuming they would intend to disclaim and use the uh, new equipment on the invoice as support for that. Uh, yes, we, we covered this, I think, during the last uh, presentation as a, quote, related animal product for used farm machinery. So, uh, yes, for new farm equipment, there's a multitude of ways to disclaim and support your disclaim. Um, you can have it as an invoice. Um, if you want to avoid DIS documents, you could put it in the cargo description or material description saying new, unused. You know, I don't know if you have any text limits on that, but uh, there's a multitude of ways to show that the equipment is uh, new and unused, and that's why you're disclaiming the farm equipment. All right, very good. So that, that ends the questions. Um, for those who are still uh, trying to figure out where this information is housed, um, the uh, implementation guide and the supplemental guide are both on the uh, cbp.gov website. Uh, under the uh, ACE ABI CATER, so all the information uh, is there. Um, thanks you for attending our webinar today, and uh, just as a reminder, we will have cut flowers um, in uh, on Thursday, uh, same time, um, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern. So please, uh, please join uh, uh, on Thursday. So thanks, thanks again for attending and I hope you have a great day.